Danger Dolan. From epic adventures spread across a large urban world to unique titles that just slipped away, we count 15 games that have been officially cancelled by the developers. Number 15. Tiberium. Pretty much everyone that plays video games knows and loves the Command & Conquer series, and this game looked like a promising addition to the franchise. Tiberium was going to be a tactical first person shooter title where you play as GDI Commando fighting off a repeat invasion of the screen. It was cancelled because of a supposed low quality, but knowing EA this could just mean the game targeted a niche instead of a wide audience. Number 14. Sadness. The Nintendo Wii sold far more than the 360 and PS3, but it had the least amount of quality titles of any 7th generation console. That's not to say it didn't have some amazing games, like the Mario Galaxy games, but it still lacked in quality titles. So with that in mind, the cancellation of Sadness is depressing, terrible puns aside. Not only did it smell of a quality title, it was more of an uh, adult and gamer focused title, of which the Wii lacked variety. Sadness was going to be a survival horror game, had entirely black and white graphics with an emphasis on psychological horror over violence. Sadly, the game was cancelled in 2010, at the same time the developer, Nibris, was shut down. Number 13. Project Titan. Now we really don't know about what the game involved other than it was a non-subscription sci-fi shooter based MMO that probably played a little like Overwatch will since some of the assets have been moved over to it since the cancellation. What we do know is that it would have been really cool to see if Blizzard could have successfully created an MMO that trumped WoW. All in all, at least they're not completely destroying it like StarCraft Ghost or Warcraft Adventures. Number 12. Prey 2. So Prey was an innovative FPS title that involved some really cool mechanics such as playing with gravity, where you'd be able to walk on any surface like the iron boots used in Twilight Princess. It also had portals, much like the Portal series, except you couldn't place them yourself. In Prey 2, you would play as an amnesiac bounty hunter on an alien world, and the gameplay would be fast-paced run and gunning, with some great looking visuals for the time. According to Bethesda, the game was cancelled because it didn't meet their quality standards. In other news, apparently Bethesda has quality standards, which might not be apparent if you've played Brink. Number 11. Dungeon Keeper 3 War for the Overworld so Dungeon Keeper was an incredibly fun strategy game released in 1997 where you were the villain, creating a dungeon designed to kill those dastardly heroes that always try and prevent your ruling of the world and whatnot. Dungeon Keeper 2 came out and improved upon the original, but the worst part was that there was a trailer for the third game included on the disc. This game was reported to have included a new race, improved the economy, and allowed you to play as the sissy heroes. Apparently EA decided to cancel this game because of their Harry Potter and Lord of the Ring titles. Honestly, who wouldn't rather Dungeon Keeper 3 over another Harry Potter game? Number 10. Stalker 2. The Stalker games were a cult hit with its immersive atmosphere, great gunplay and exploration that scared the ever living shit out of you. Not only that, but the modding community kept the games alive to this day. There's also multiplayer, but it's really not the main reason you would play it. Stalker 2 was cancelled through a Twitter post in 2012 to many gamers' dismay. The information released for the game was sparse at best. All we really know is that it was going to be made in a completely new engine. Number 9. Baldur's Gate 3 The Black Hound. The third entry in one of, if not the most, widely renowned and highly praised CRPG series was supposed to integrate a new game engine to replace the Infinity engine, but it was cancelled at 80% completion thanks to licensing issues. Surprisingly, the game was transformed into Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2, but considering this game was on a different engine than what 3 was on and had completely different gameplay, it is debatable as to how much of the project was transferred. Not only was this game cancelled, it was also intended to be the first in a new trilogy of games. Of course, maybe it's a good thing this series died because it became nothing but a yearly rehash. Number 8. Fallout Online. I mean, what Fallout fan wouldn't want a survival MMO based in the wastelands? Of course, the vast majority of MMOs aren't anywhere near as good as they could have been, so maybe it's a good thing it's gone. Nah, screw it, I still want it. Anyway, the trials and tribulations of Fallout Online were monetary and legal. 
that basically the developers couldn't really afford to make it. Bethesda didn't want anyone to make it in the first place. Bethesda said that Interplay, the producers of Fallout Online, only licensed the name and weren't allowed to use any Fallout related assets and sued Interplay based on this fact. Bethesda lost this lawsuit but won in the end after several more suing attempts, the game was cancelled out of court. Number 7 Star Wars 1313 Everyone loves bounty hunter games, especially if the Star Wars universe is involved. So when the game was announced at E3 2012, everyone, including myself, was interested if not excited to see the game's release. You play as Boba Fett in his early adulthood. It was supposed to be a grittier and darker look at the Star Wars universe with a focus on gadgetry and weaponry instead of the Force and lightsabers. Unfortunately, as a result of the Disney acquisition of LucasArts, the game was cancelled in early 2013. However, with the new Star Wars movies being released as of December 2015, we should see a resurgence in Star Wars games. Hopefully we'll see something like 1313 being released eventually. Number 6 BC One of Molyneux's wild promises that got cancelled because it wouldn't live up to the promises. Which is a rather novel concept looking back at it. The game was set in a prehistoric time period in which you would control an evolving tribe of early humans in a complex ecosystem where if you overhunted a certain species, it would go extinct and affect the future of the continent. The main enemies in the game were the simians, an ape species that would hound you throughout the ages. Number 5 The Lord of the Rings The White Council This game was supposed to be EA's answer to the Elder Scrolls series, an open world RPG in which you would choose to play as a man, dwarf, elf or hobbit, and your ultimate goal was to become a hero worthy of the White Council's approval. Sounds cool? Sure does, but unfortunately it was put on indefinite hiatus thanks to management problems, which is business talk for some people through a hissy fit about one thing or another. The lack of this game's existence is a front to all Lord of the Rings fans. Exploring Middle Earth, building a name for yourself by shaping the world enough to earn a name in the history books sounds pretty amazing. Number 4 StarCraft Ghost It was confirmed to be cancelled by Mike Morheim in 2014, which honestly opened the old wound and salted it because I had almost forgotten about it by that point. The game was based around playing a ghost from the StarCraft universe, in which you could go invisible, use an EMP, a flamethrower, and drive hover bikes, scout cars, and the goddamn siege tanks. Not only that, but the multiplayer you could play as a marine, firebat, ghost, and light infantry, all of which being able to drive the vehicles previously mentioned. I can only imagine how many hours I would have spent in this fucking game had it been released. Number 3 Shenmue 3, a game that has been announced and cancelled so many times that we've all lost count. Technically the game is vaporware, but seeing how it's been cancelled multiple times, I think it's earned a solid place on this list. Sega says the story has been finished even though the end of Shenmue 2 wasn't in any way conclusive. Don't really know what they're trying to pull, maybe they think it's been so long we've all forgotten about the end of the second game. However, the creator has teased many times that he still wants to make Shenmue 3, but I think at this point we all know better. The chances of this game being released is so close to zero it's barely worth mentioning. But hey, we can still hope, right? Number 2 Silent Hills The disappointment for this one is fresh. The Silent Hill franchise hasn't been great since the third installment and the combined works of Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro could have only produced good things. In fact, it did produce one amazing thing, PT. Thankfully, we have this snippet instead of nothing, but I still would rather a complete game. Of course, Konami plan to continue making Silent Hill games, but hopefully they'll take a look at PT and the massive hype it created and do their best to not suck Donkey Dong this time around. And well, thanks for not offering PT online anymore. Yeah, that's great. Number one, the Mega Man franchise. This includes every Mega Man game that could have existed, including these spin-offs, because Battle Network was fun as all buggery as well. However, the biggest loss, I think, is the cancelled Mega Man Legends 3. 3D platformer seems to have gone out of fashion with pretty much everyone except Nintendo, plus a few indie developers, and Mega Man Legends 3 for the 3DS could have been amazing. There's the Kickstarter Mighty No. 9 series made by the creator of Mega Man that could supersede the Mega Man franchise, but I think it's going to be the same no matter how much we hope. Also, an honourable mention to all of the vaporware titles out there like Black and White 2 and Half-Life 3. 
That's it for this countdown. And have a good one.